It is the best festival of 2008. It's Electric Picnic, Underworld, Carl has dropped in. How are you? I'm good, yeah, a little dazed from the crossing, but I'm okay. We've been having this debate. Is this your first time playing here, or have you not played before? We've not played the Electric Picnic before, but obviously we've played in Ireland loads of times. Okay, cool. Now, the current album, um, some people would say it's your best album. I'd probably be one of those. How, how would you feel about that? Is it is it the kind of culmination of almost like what two decades of, of the band? Because you are around nearly that long. Yeah, we, uh, well, uh, 27 years actually. Rick 27. And, Rick and me have been playing together 27 years, and this Underworld version of Underworld's been 18 years now. Yeah, it's. It, we, I, I'm a bit shocked that the last album got received so well. Really, it was. Uh, it was quite honest, quite an honest album, uh, not full of banging tunes, uh, which is always a bit of a, uh, a strange one when you've got to take it out on tour and you know that the majority of the shows that we do are about celebration and, and very up vibe. But uh, its reception has been, been fantastic. It's, it's been around a while now, we're just looking forward to getting on and making new things and, and getting something out that's about what we feel now. Yeah. I spoke to the Prodigy a couple of months ago and they were saying that they're going back to their roots, they're going back to experience and jail to gen generation. Um, would that ever be something you would do? Would you kind of look back to your past to kind of inspire you? We've always been people that have looked back and looked forward. You know, something that John Peel gave us was this, don't forget your roots as well as what's going on around you in the, it, it, at the moment and the contemporary sounds. So we're always mashing it up with that. Underworld's always been about that, mashing up stuff from way back to things that's been going on today. Mm. Have you found that you've kind of, you've obviously inspired a lot of bands coming up, a lot of artists, a lot of DJs. Have you found that they've kind of inspired you in some ways now? Oh, definitely. We're, we do a, a web radio show off our, off our website and we've been doing that for a number of years now. And it's simply the, the new music that comes in is the single most uh, influential factor on our, on our sound now. It's, it's all the new bands and the new sounds of any genre of music finds its way into our sound now. What type of stuff are you listening to? Anyone in particular that's really kind of like, yeah. You got me there. I yeah. love it. I hate yeah. it. When people ask yeah. me that, it's always like, what? Uh, uh. You're hitting a man below the belt way before breakfast has, uh, has hit the, the bottom of the stomach. Um, uh, they're, they're the ones that have always been influential to us. People like Efter Klang, um, Nina Nastasia, I mean, people like Oxford Collapse now, and The Falls, and uh, Melt Banana out in, uh, out in, in Japan. As I say, Tinaruen, you know, I met up with Tinaruen in, in Brighton with a view to trying to do something together then, a fusion thing going on, you know, and uh, blues players, the, the new young blues players that are coming up now, it's all having an effect on what we do. Mm, fairly diverse bunch there, but I'm glad you said Tinaruen because actually they played yesterday here and just were, uh, I think, just like... I don't know how to put it, it's just magic, doesn't it? It really is something special. Water is Life, I think, is definitely one of those albums that's going to be around for a long, long time. How did you come across them? I'm not sure whether I didn't come across Tinaruen from a tape that I bought in North Africa a lot of years ago, and I'm still trying to find that tape now. Um, but I, I got a copy of the very first album, the Radio Tista Sessions, and uh, loved it. Uh, then followed everything that they did, bought everything they did from then on, the Festival in the Desert and the Festival in the Desert DVD, and that's always been an, an inspiration to actually go and play the Festival in the Desert. Um, and to go there, I, I was a fan of uh, Ali Fakature and that whole sound that was coming out of Africa. So I followed Tinada went through every every album that they've done, and then read something that they... It was, We've always been about keeping the door open and communicating with other bands. I read an article they did in the Fruits magazine earlier this year where they were talking about they liked to play at rock festivals because they liked to play dance music and they liked to be around eclectic scenes where they were playing with other types of music. And I thought, this band's for us. Absolutely. Not only, you know, today when I came in, I retuned re guitar, the guitar you've got here because I basically my influence is desert blues. And so I play, that's, that's all I play and have done for years because of people like Ali Fakature and, uh, and Tin Aruen. Um, so finally been in touch with them and their manager and uh, they're going back to the desert now for ages to, to write and we just got back from America and it was, I thought we were going to play on the same night so we could actually maybe you know, cross talk there. 
and uh, it wasn't going to happen. So I had to get in a car and drive all the way down to Brighton on Monday. You know, just I was falling to bits. But it was fantastic just to be around that music and meet them and, and talk about the possibility of something happening together. Getting back to your music, when you think back to the mid 90s, you know, born slippy, you can't get away from it, train spotting, is that a blessing or a curse? It, it's never a curse, not at the moment anyway. It's, uh, it opened up a huge amount of doors to Underworld. It moved us on in a, in a giant leap you know, of years, really, that it would have taken us to get to that place, steadily building as we were. Um, obviously, you know, did a lot of financial things, which are, which are all very lovely. Um, but it, it elevated us from a, a, a band that was always underground to one that was playing on the main stage at festivals and crossing over and, and gave us opportunities to do things with music and beyond music that, that, that we do um, much quicker than it, than it would have been. And then you know you got that thing that when you play it, it's great. It's just the vibe that comes back off the crowd. It's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I was playing Cowgirl on the um, on my show there recently, and I was turned it up. And went, oh man, he's <laughs> <laughs> way back. The nostalgic tear in my eye, and I went, "Am I turning into an old fart?" Well, quite possibly, but I'm happy about that. Um, but listen, thanks a million for dropping in. Um, we're really looking forward to seeing you play on, on the main stage. Or, well, one of the, it's one yeah, of the stages. One of the stages. Yeah, it, you know, coming back to Ireland, is, it's, it's very much a homeland for us. There's the, the vibe here. You, you, you don't know what you're going to get. You're either going to get a vibe from a crowd which is fantastic or really fantastic. It's just, there's something that goes on amongst the Celts. And uh, it's, it's just... That's a thrill to come back, it really is. It sounds very sycophantic, that does, doesn't it? No, but it's, if it's true, it's true, you know, yeah. it's great to have you. Yeah, we've got, we got a lot of friends here and uh, it's always good to come back. Cool. Welcome back.